I entered, I entered the world of having to wear readers. God, I'm getting old. Huh? I thought maybe you just didn't put your contacts in. Oh, I got the contacts in. It was never up close before. And I went to a bigger print Bible. But, uh, yeah, all right. It's just old. Uh, Revelation chapter 3 beginning in verse 7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens no one can shut, and what he shuts no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one could shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I, will come, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious... I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God and the new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This past Thursday, sitting in the office, I get a phone call. Late in the afternoon, uh, Lenny had come by and visited with me for a little while. Right after he left, I get a phone call. And this lady calls and she says, um, I need help with some utilities and I need help with my rent. And I, need help. and I said, well, I'm sorry, we just don't have the money. But if you, if, you know, we'll help you with food. Gladly help you with food. And she said, well, I just can't believe you won't help me. And I said... If we don't have it, I can't give it to you. You don't understand. We have a budget for cup ministry, and that budget goes like this, and I never know how much money's going to come in for it, and we buy food with it. That's where we are. We buy food with it. And she said, Well, I just can't believe that you won't help me. I said, Again, I don't, you don't understand. We just don't have the money. And she said, well, you're just, you're just a racist. That's why you won't. Now, as far as I could tell, uh, she was white. I, I, you know, I have no idea. And she says, well, I, you're just a racist. You don't, like, you don't like me and you won't help me because I have mixed race children. I didn't know she had mixed race children. <laughs> and I said, ma'am, I, I think you're misunderstanding something. We're not Skyping. We're talking on the phone. I can't see you. I cannot see what's going on. As far as I know, I don't know you. And she said, well, you're just a racist and I'm turning you into the Attorney General. At this point, smart aleck kicks in. I said, well, tell Dustin when you call him that I said hello. He's got my number. He'll call me. Me and Dustin will have a good time. But don't you call him Dustin because you don't know him like I do. To, to, you need to call him Mr. Attorney General. <laughs> and she went, I knew it was fixed in Arkansas. I knew it. It's a pol <laughs> corrupt political system that even the people that are crooks know the Attorney General. <laughs> wow. I was like, well, have a good weekend. And hung up the phone. I tell you that story because Jesus talks about an open door in this text, and so I, I Bobby's going to look out and see if it's still snowing. <laughs> yep, still snowing. Um, open doors. I think one of the biggest open doors that we have is cut ministry, but it's a difficult door. Because dealing with and assisting the poor is a difficult ministry to be involved in. Because here's what's happened to our culture. Our culture has become one of where everyone has their hand out rather than 
doing something rather than wanting to work or sometimes the ability to find work is difficult especially in our economy today but it is very difficult for us to go through that door because people are constantly coming to us wanting something and I believe that the open door that God has placed before us is an opportunity to reach out to the poor and to really make a difference in their lives. I had an opportunity two weeks ago to a lady had called and I don't know for whatever reason I, I took the food to her. We just don't deliver because if we ever get started delivering food it's, it's going to be an ugly situation and so the few times that we have, you know, taken the food, it's usually we got there and it was, you know, instantly where it's like, wow, you know. Um, this lady called and her story uh, was like this. She said, uh, listen, she said, um, I can't drive down there and here's why. She said, I bought a new, a new to her vehicle six months ago, put the tags on it, never had the money to pay the sales tax. I think all of us that have had to go pay sales tax on a used vehicle have found the aggravation to that. And so, um, and then sometimes you don't have the money and she didn't have the money to, to pay it. And so she's driven around with basically fictitious tags on this vehicle. Um, and she got pulled over. And the officer here in town was nice enough to go, it was a cold morning, she's taking her kids to school and then she's going to work. He was nice enough not to give her a ticket because actually in the city of Springdale, after 30 days, if you are caught with fictitious tags, they tow your vehicle. They impound it. And you have to go get the tags, get it taken care of, come and show proof of that and pay the storage and the tow fee. So Springdale cracks down on that kind of thing. So she was very lucky. And so she said, listen, he told me he would remember my vehicle and if he saw me, he would pull me over and tow it no matter what. So she said, I'm not driving, but I need food for my child. I've got a child home sick from school today and I have two other children. And she says, I'm going tomorrow to get the tags. And she goes, I would have done it today. This would have been the great day to do it. But it was Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so the state offices were closed, so she could not. And so she tells me this story. So there was something about the story that I said, all right, I'll carry the groceries over. So I carry the groceries, take the groceries over to her home. And she opens the door and she says, come in. I'm by myself. Normally I will never enter a woman I don't know home by myself. Just not going to happen. Well, her 12-year-old son comes running up and goes, Oh my God, Phil Robertson brought us groceries. Phil Robertson brought us groceries. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm safe. I can go in. This child is here. He's 12, going on 13. He's got a birthday coming up in May. And, and he's going to be 13 years old. And So I come in and I set the groceries down in a, number one, very clean house. Now, I'm not one of these people that walks in and judges people's housekeeping. But let me tell you, we've carried some, we've gone into some homes helping people with cup ministry that when you left, you literally wanted to be hosed off by the fire department. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm not being judgmental. I'm just talking about it was not a good situation for anybody to be living in. It was a very clean house, very well kept um, situation. You could tell. Um, an hour and a half later, I'm leaving. And I sat at the table and shared Jesus with her and her son. And they were hungry for it. Um, they're hungry not just for the physical food that we could give them, but the spiritual food that we can hand out. Um, I just believe that God has opened up a door. I think with her, God has opened up a door. She wants to come to church. She's the one that I shared last week about saying, telling to her the advantage of being a part of a fellowship of believers and the difference that it makes being a part of a fellowship of believers. With that said, she is yet skeptical. She's afraid. Um, she was going to come Wednesday night um, and sent me a text and the stomach virus had invaded their home. Um, we talked again on Thursday. I sent her a text and said, I hope you're feeling better. And she goes, 
She texts me back and she goes, you know, actually I am, but the kids are still sick, but I'm feeling better, thank thankfully. And she goes, this is really strange. She goes, I just got to say, she goes, this is really strange. And, and I was like, oh no, I've overstepped my bounds. And she goes, this is so nice. I've never had somebody that, that would just check on me out of the blue like this. It's very nice. And I said, well, if you come and you become a part of the family, you will have a family of people that will care for you. Uh, I believe God is... I think that sometimes what we do when we read this text to the church at Philadelphia, we see that we expect this big magical kingdom door to be opened up for us. And the door may be as small as a side garage door where we carry food through. That's what I want us to see. And so what I want to charge us with this week, and, and we'll just stop here and then we'll come back and really dig into this text. But what I really want us to see and understand is if we will open our eyes, God will open up doors all around us where we can make a difference. And when God does open that door, no one can shut it. No one can shut a door that God opens. <coughs> if you start down a situation and it's not working out, um, it may not be the door that God's opened, or it may be that Satan is causing some issues. But I want us to understand that God will open doors for us. I think what happens to us too many times is that we see doors that are open for us, but it's not the door that we want to go through. and Or it's not the situation that we want to go through. Talking to a fellow minister here in town, and he was saying that... Um, he said, you have such an opportunity with Cup Ministry to make a difference in so many lives. He, and he said, yet so many churches would not want that opportunity. And he said, because with poor comes difficulties. Because the poor offer no one anything but problems. And yet if you read Scripture... The people that Jesus said would always be rich in faith were the poor. So I think God is, even after all these years, I continue to see that God is opening up doors for us. Um, I'm going to bring it to a close there because I know the snow's on everybody's mind and we'll get everybody home and hopefully safely today. If you need help cleaning your car off, your car's covered, we'll, we'll get a crew together here and let's clean some windshields off and get everybody home safely and taken care of. Bobby, what shoes do you have on today, buddy? That's what I was afraid of. He's got tennis shoes on. I look. The reason, the reason I asked that is because the Sunday that we had the really big snow, he wears these slick sole dress shoes in here, falls down, cracks the wall, and his head. Uh, so... So... We're going to make sure that Bobby gets to the vehicle and anybody else that needs help. So let's just stand and we'll just...